Because we have such high tidal amplitude, in other words, the difference between high and low tide, a lot of water moves in and out of the salt marsh here. And because of that, animals have to have some sort of structure to hold on to. I mean, some animals can move in and out with the tides, like fish, dolphins, some of the bigger, stronger things. But the smaller stuff either is a slave to the tide moving in and out, or more importantly, it holds on to something. So anything in this ecosystem uh, that structure, any kind of structure, posts or docks or anything like that, is going to instantly be colonized by a variety of marine organisms. So let's pull this thing up and see what we found. And there's probably a lot of things right on this rope. Lots of stuff. Sea squirts. <laughs> you can see all the water squirting. It's just amazing. And so this, this rope has only been here a couple of years, and you can see how much stuff is, has colonized this. This is an old crab trap rope. And just a little piece of the crab trap is still left. <laughs> I can't believe how much water is sprayed off of this thing. Just unbelievable. Lots of cool stuff in here. There's a variety of small creatures that are a little bit hard to see that live on these, uh, in these hydroids and on all these, this structure that is created. One example is something called a polychaete worm. And polychaete worms, chaetae are like little legs. So this means many legged worm. And so this particular worm is just, it's got tiny little feet, almost little silly on it, and that's what it helps to move. These animals come in a variety of sizes. Some of them are kind of small, and some of them get quite big. But you can imagine, this is great food for birds and fish and all sorts of other things. So a lot of things eat them, but mostly they have a place to hold on. We've also got a couple little crabs here. This is a, looks like a little mud crab, possibly. It's got black claw tips. But what's really cool about it is this is a sponge crab. And when crabs have, uh, female crabs have eggs, they hold them up underneath the apron and you can see their eggs just spilling out of this. So these little eggs will hatch into little tiny larval crabs and those crabs eventually will, you know, get back down the bottom. They're free floating in with the tide for a while and then they'll turn into little tiny crabs that look like these. But think how small the babies are. I mean, this crab is not very big to begin with and you can imagine what the babies are like. And so all these are eggs and potentially any one of these could form into an adult crab one day. It's just amazing how much stuff is alive. There's not so much living in the water column, but anytime you get any kind of structure, you're gonna see a lot of neat things attached to that structure. Man, we have some really cool stuff here. We've got a bunch of sea squirts, and you can see how these guys spray water. And uh, these things live in the marsh. They're very common. And once again, they're gonna colonize any structure that they run into. And they have a way of sort of taking in water, pulling all sorts of small creatures and small particles out of it, and then passing the water back through their systems. A lot of these organisms actually help to clean the water and take a lot of the things out of it. But they, you can imagine this on the bottom of a boat or something. And some people call this dock fouling because this stuff grows on the bottom of dock, docks and causes some real problems. There's some other stuff here. There's some really cool red beard sponge. And that's what this stuff is. And this is a true sponge, a periphera. And this generally is down deeper in the water column. Probably doesn't require as much light. And it could be that the salinities stay higher down deeper in the, in the river. We also have some garlic sponge here. I think I saw some. And this stuff smells a little bit like garlic, and that's where it gets its name. Now, one of the things that's interesting is this is stuff that's um, associated with high salinities. We get salinities of almost what o open ocean water is, you know, 33, sometimes parts per thousand. So this is stuff that likes high salinities during times of lots of rainfall, a lot of this stuff will die. And of course it recolonizes when it gets a chance, but uh, in a lot of ways, a lot of fresh water running into the marsh uh, can poison the marsh. So that's something we need to keep in mind in terms of roads and impervious surfaces and things like that. <laughs>